Contrary to popular opinion, Restream is the elder statesman in the streaming world, being known for video distribution, hence the name Restream. Along the way, they added a browser-based studio to compete with then new kid StreamYard. But I gotta tell you, it's still pound for pound a great option for creators even today. If you're just getting started or you've been on the platform for a while, let me share three areas of focus in this Restream crash course. <laughs> Let's go. First things first, we gotta look at the pricing, right? This is the pricing page. You can see their free plan, some of the things that it has included in it. You can also see the uh, standard plan and it comes with th three multi-channels, no watermark studio, keep that in mind. So this is like your first plan where you're actually paying. Um, also, I am looking at this in terms of annual pricing instead of monthly pricing. Let's go ahead and kick up the, uh, view on that so you can kind of get a better view of what that looks like $16 a month if you're doing it annual but if we change that to uh, monthly pricing you will see that you get $19 a month essentially if you switch to annual pricing you'll get it get two months for free uh, I am on the $50 plan or if you put it back to annual the $39 plan and uh, that's kind of where I sit. This is the dashboard. This is what Restream looks like. And in here, we can set up our destinations uh, by simply going to channels. That's where you'd set up your destination. You can click the add button there and you have a myriad of destinations. I would say Restream has probably the most full list of destinations of any of the streaming platforms. And that is because of course they utilize their platform to be a distributor no matter what platform you're using so keep that in mind as well that's kind of their bread and butter that's what they're known for um you have past streams here and it'll kind of showcase some of the things i like this because you can go in here and actually go in and reschedule or duplicate one of these so if you had like settings or something you got to do that show again you can do that video storage kind of holds where your videos are and you can actually take your video from here. You can see if I click these three buttons and schedule your stream. So if you have a pre-produced video, maybe you did a stream before or you want to uh, upload a fully produced video and stream it as if it's live, you have that functionality right here within Restream. And again, uh, those are the things that they're really known for. Uh, but even if you actually did a live show before, you can see some of the previous live streams that I've had here, you can actually take those and schedule them again. So that is a really good feature if you want to tag that again. If you don't leave your video live or the live video available for replay, many churches do this as well. You stream it in the morning, stream it in the afternoon, and even maybe stream it the next morning as well, just because you get around that copyright uh, infringement piece. Uh, AI clips is a great addition, but it is a part of the next tier of plans, uh, which is not something I'm very happy about, but hey, it's, that's the way Restream decided to do it. So that kind of gives you a look and feel of what the desktop is. You do have the ability to add in teams, um, so I can have other members come through and, and work with me in the studio. You hit this new stream button, you get a couple of options, right? You have a couple of options in terms of your studio, encoder RTMP, video or playlist, and you have record audio and video. First thing I wanna kind of showcase is re video or playlist. Um, you can go here, you select a video, as I mentioned before, you can stream that video uh, to your destinations, wherever that might be. But in addition, you can stream a playlist. And a playlist simply means you can select a number of videos, right? Essentially video editing, and I have a full video on this, on how to use playlists, and I'll put a card right here. Uh, for you guys to be able to check that out. But you can select a number of videos, put them all into a playlist, and stream that playlist to your destinations. I mean, talk about not having to edit video and all that other good stuff. That would be super clutch uh, for those who have these different clips. Maybe you got many pieces coming from all over. That was a feature I thought Restream really kind of knocked it out of the park with that one, uh, especially for those who want to leverage video naturally, especially for those who the friction of having to drop them all on the timeline and put them all together and then try to make that video available. You could do that all right here 
stream it to an unlisted destination. Now you have the whole video. You can take that video and send it to wherever you need it to be. So that's another little hack there to think about. Um, video or playlist, record audio and video, and an art encoder RTMP. I'm going to touch on that last. And I do have some, you know, what I'd like to call best practices are three of the ways that I use Restream. I'm going to share those towards the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned. But uh, record audio and video is where I'm going to go in. This is the same look and feel if you were actually setting up to do a live stream with Restream's studio. So here you have Restream Studio. This looks and feels a little bit familiar to some of the other platforms that we have used in the past, EVMux and StreamYard, uh, maybe even BeLive and Light Studio in, in case Melon App. There's so many of the others that, that kind of have gone the way of the dodo, but Restream's still here, still doing their thing. Uh, so you have here, I've just kind of selected my top down shot uh, for this particular camera and it is in a cropped view. I can make that full, I can, put it down, I, some of the functionality that you, we're all used to in terms of overlays, here's an overlay, it kind of has my why I go live, even, even the, the end screen that you may have seen me use before, or if you wanna use a full screen overlay, they're all here. Um, and you do have the ability to play videos and uh, have that go through manually. Uh, you do also have the functionality of scenes. So if I were to add a second camera, let's try that real quick. So we have extra camera right here. I'm gonna add this background the BTS camera in. And once that's in, you'll see it here. And I just have to toggle this switch on to add it to the stage. Um, I guess because this is full screen, it doesn't allow me to add it in there. But anyway, you'll see the two cameras are here now. And so I have this quote unquote scene. Then I can select the flyer scene, which allows me to just have that flyer on screen. I can go to play a video. Can even adjust the sound on that. You can decide whether or not to loop the video. And then when that video is done, unfortunately it doesn't automatically go to the next scene, but you can select the next scene. And you can see here that it is picture in picture and you can decide which one is big, which one is little. So you have some of those regular and general functionalities that we are used to from several of the other platforms. Uh, slightly different, they've done it in their own unique way. Some of the things that are also cool, captions, uh, they've got two level. I thought that was really cool. Um, you can you can actually edit those and decide what they look like here as well. Uh, so you have that. You also have some, some tickers as well uh, that you can utilize. There's one. Uh, it's actually still another caption. But either way, you can put some things on screen, some call outs for your audience while you're streaming. Um, you also have the ability to play background music. And there's several that is built in, but you can also load up some, some of your own. Um, there is notes section. I like this for being able to kind of put your sh run of show so you don't have to move on to some other platform to see that. And then you have your private chat here as well. So your, your comments come in. Um, if, if, you, if we were using the live stream version of the studio, you would have a section there for comments, uh, but we are not using that. So I'll maybe showcase that to you in a little bit. But um, the last thing I wanted to show here is that you have QR codes. And this is really a dope feature, one that I don't hear stream, uh, Restream, <laughs> Restream uh, really highlighting. And that is the fact that they have the ability to add QR codes. And so you just click the add button, put your title in, put your link in, whatever that website is, hit add, and it will generate a QR code. And so here you can see um, uh, book, uh, book a session, uh, you'll see that come up on screen right there. So that is there. And, and if somebody scans it, it will actually drop it in the chat. That's pretty dope as well. So keep that in mind. Um, second, I have a, a different type of QR code, which is QR code plus image. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more prominent, gives a little bit more information around what that QR code is gonna allow them to do. Um, maybe you have a support the stream, these are really cool functions and features. This is one that I hope the other platforms actually copy because I think this just makes perfect sense. Um, it's got that little twilight thing that goes around it. Really dope feature here from Restream. Friction is anything that is multiple steps, anything that gets in your way of getting the, uh, the primary task done. And that's what we hope to go over in the Friction to Flow Masterclass. You've been watching this video on Restream and Restream is one of those tools that really helps you to get to done sooner because it removes some of those steps that are required in the process. Imagine if you knew exactly what to do 
to get all of those friction points out of your processes. Join us for the Friction to Flow Masterclass. Register on KirkRNugent.com today to reserve your seat, and we'll see you there. Now, back to the content. So here, uh, the other thing that I was gonna showcase is if you hit the plus sign down here, you have the option to hit show more, and there's some other options that come up. We can add a presentation, you have video storage where you can actually uh, save your files. You can do a screen share, of course. Extra camera is what I showed before. Local video, uh, which means you're playing a video from your local machine. Then you have RTMP source. This is a really great feature, but unfortunately it is not part of my plan, but it allows you to bring in a, a select your Restream Studio as a destination for a different streaming platform, let's say like vMix or even Ecamm. Uh, that can be pretty clutch. If I wanted to do a presentation, here's one. I can add that in and you can see that that takes up the screen. I do need to kind of decide which way I want my, my, my screen to look. You can select your layout and actually change things around so that you have uh, the one that you want big, big, and the one that you want small, small. And of course you'd want to take off your QR code, but the idea is it is fairly intuitive how you can do this, how can you, how you can utilize these functions and features. And I think that these are some of the more critical areas that you want to pay attention to. Um, one of the things that the, one of the ways that I utilize Restream, of course, is by using it as a distributor, right? I use it for a distributor and for chat. And so what I do is I'll come right here to new stream. I'll go to encoder RTMP. I'm going to just kind of showcase what these steps look like. Uh, once you have this screen up, you will go over here to uh, the title itself and you can say schedule event. That way it actually does uh, schedule to your destination here. I'm just going to say test stream, test stream, upload a image, <laughs> the friction to flow masterclass. Go ahead and grab your seats at Um I want to select this to be a time later in the day today. And we hit next. I'm going to scroll down to my YouTube channel. I select that. But once I select that, I can click schedule, but I recommend going and hitting edit. And once you hit edit, you have some more functionality here. I can actually take changes to unlisted, which is what I want it to be. You have your normal streaming and you can actually turn on closed captioning. That was a big thing for me. I use this for a lot of large scale projects and having to go into the destination to make that change was a pain. So I'm glad Restream has actually added this here. We can click save here, click schedule, and then that thing is ready to go. And then the next thing that you would do in my case would be to head over to Ecamm. Once this is all saved and ready to go, I can go over to Ecamm. Now I'm going to click back to the home page. You can see now that this is a stream that is scheduled. You can see the status of it is scheduled for today at 630. It's going to go to YouTube. And so what I would do on that is pull it up on Ecamm. But the, in, in addition to that, I can go to chat.restream.io. And this page allows you to see whatever uh, comments are coming in from whatever destinations you're streaming to, regardless of whether you're on the machine that's streaming or not. You can log in. I can actually have other people look at these comments. They can help me to moderate. They can put people on timeout. So this is another thing, again, that helps to reduce friction, allows you to get to done sooner. But let's take a look at what it looks like inside Ecamm. So here you can see that I'm just going to change. You can already see that it's already ready to schedule. But if I go up here, you can see that that's the test stream. And then you can go to destinations. You'll see Restream is there. You simply log in with your login and password and your destinations inside your streaming platform. You can see that that's there. It's scheduled, ready to go. And that does the job. Restream is a great platform. It does the job. It is, as I mentioned before, pound for pound, equally as impressive as some of their counterparts, uh, but it does have its own way of doing things. And if that's your cup of tea, by all means, go for it. However, if you want to learn more specifics on some of the Restream functionality and features, I want you to check out this playlist right here. I go over in this playlist in-depth uh, pieces, uh, QR codes, the step-by-step -step, uh, guides and tutorials on how to utilize different things within the Restream platform. Click right here to watch, and I'll see you over there. Grace and peace, fam. <laughs>